I'm Wes from Recommended Playing, and this guide is going to take you step by step to quickly getting yourself established in Elden Ring. The main goal is to get access to some strong weapons and spells early, do some exploration, and unlock a few extremely efficient grinding locations with minimal boss interactions. This will establish yourself and make Elden Ring much easier moving forward. I'll be starting with a new character, but if you're early on in the game, you can still follow this guide. Starting with a new character, you can choose whatever you like. However, Bandit has desirable starting levels and gear for what we're about to do, so it's the recommended starter. Golden Seed is the obvious choice for your gift. You can turn this in at any Site of Grace for plus one charge to your healing flask. This is easily the strongest option early on. Now, you can enter the game. This first section is a simple straight run and essentially force loss to the tutorial boss. Just eat it and you'll get to the optional tutorial area. You can head down the hole if you want the basics, otherwise just head straight up, open the door and head out the cave. Activate this site of grace and add a charge to your flask using the golden seed. You should also allocate your flask to purely crimson for this first part. Now head up the elevator and open the door. Head straight through ahead to the man and site of grace. Activate this Sight of Grace and then speak to White-Faced Vare. You'll need to complete his questline to gain access to a very late game grinding location, a lot earlier than normal. First things first, you'll want to head to the Church of Ella. It's right ahead of you. Avoid the Tree Sentinel, you will get demolished. Activate the Sight of Grace inside. Now grab the Smithing Stone on the Anvil next to the Santa Claus looking merchant. Your goal now is to head towards the castle. Head northeast and follow the road to the Gate Ruins. You should do your best to snag the map from the marker and then immediately turn to your left towards the gate. All you need to do is grab the Sight of Grace and then you can die to the enemies. If you die, when given the option, choose the last Sight of Grace. If you chose Shrine of Marika, you'll have to fast travel to it. Once you rest at this Sight of Grace, you'll get some exposition from Melina. But more importantly, you'll be given the Spectral Steed Whistle. This is for your horse, Torrent. Once you have access to Torrent, open your map and fast travel back to the Church of Ella. You'll find the mysterious witch, Reyna. Talk to her and tell her the truth, that you can summon Torrent. She'll give you a bell and the Lone Wolf Ashes. Curiously, this Lone Wolf Ashes summons three wolves. Who would have thought? With that complete, it's time for one more quick detour. Call Torrent and head southwest towards the beach. Once you reach the edge, turn to the east. Work your way around this cliff until you can find a drop onto a collapsed building. Now jump down and head back down to ground level. Follow the beach to the east now to find a gold pickled fowl foot on the ground. Now double back southwest and you'll find a spirit spring geyser. Turn around and line yourself up and jump with torrent to be shot into the air. You can use this to get back topside. Otherwise, you'll just need to run far enough away from the enemies so you can fast travel back to the gate front ruins. The bandit starting class has a bleed dagger already, but we need access to a bleeding weapon if you did not pick bandit. There are two options available. First up is the flail. This is close by in the gate ruins. This does require 18 dexterity to use effectively, which will limit its usefulness, but it's an easy pickup. Simply head east from the gate front ruins site of grace. When you pass the second stagecoach on your left, head to the back and open the chest to find the flail. This is a quick and easy pickup for a bleed weapon, but likely far outside your stat requirements at the moment. Otherwise, the next dagger is much stronger and easily usable by a bandit starting class. Head east from the Gatefront Ruin Site of Grace and pass through the camp. There's another Site of Grace along the way on the left side of the road and you should pick it up. From this Site of Grace, head southeast towards the bridge. You'll want to head towards the large Erd Tree, it's a good marker. Now drop down to the marsh area below. Now simply follow the cliff on the left side under the bridge. Follow this path until you're automatically dismounted from Torrent. This is because you were invaded by an NPC. Continue up the left side and you'll encounter a cave and a fog gate. Quickly enter your menu and select system and quit out to the main menu. Now simply continue your save. You have a limited time frame here but you'll be able to get inside the impenetrable fog wall now. And you can gain access to the Site of Grace inside this cave. Head down and activate the Site of Grace in the cave. This is a useful pickup because the black phantom that spawns can be tricky and this Site of Grace is significantly closer than the previous one should you fail, and you'll probably fail. When you're done, head outside back out to the shallow river and you'll start a fight with Bloody Finger Nergis once he invades. Do your best to avoid the black phantom and eventually Blood Finger Hunter Yura will come to assist you. 
You should do your best to let Yura take the heat. The Black Phantom is parryable, and you can do a good damage if you're confident in your timing with your Buckler parry. The easiest strategy is simply to attack him from behind when he's focusing on Yura. You may be able to collect a backstab, and you'll definitely get a few bleed procs off at some point. The Black Phantom will heal, it's inevitable. If you ever get the focus of the Black Phantom, play defensively until Yura takes it back. This will likely take you a few attempts to be successful, but once you defeat the Black Phantom, you'll be rewarded with the Reduvia Dagger. This has significantly higher bleed capability than your starting dagger, and can be equipped right away as a bandit. This also has a special weapon art, but that's not overly important. Head to the Site of Grace at Agheel Lake North now. This is a long trek on Torrent. From the Agheel Lake North Site of Grace, head along the road towards the bridge. You can encounter a scarab along the way. You can take this out for an Ash of War. This is determination. This is merely incidental. Feel free to skip it or come back later. Continue along the road, but take the path to your left after the bridge. You'll want to follow the road until you find the artist's shack. Activate the Site of Grace, and you can inspect the painting for a note. Get back on Torrent, and now head south to get back on the path towards the Kaled region. Back on the road, you'll cross under a large bridge filled with trolls. Continue along this road. You'll have to run past a giant, but you'll eventually find the third church of Marika. Activate the Site of Grace and then grab the Crimson Crystal tier from the altar that unlocks a pseudo extra flask. You can mix this tier at the Site of Grace. Make sure you also grab the Sacred tier from the statue. Use this to buff your flask healing immediately. Once you're done, exit and head up the path heading upwards. You'll encounter a scarab along this path that you can take out. This has the Sacred Blade Ashes of War. Look near the scarab for another Spirit Spring Geyser. Jump up using the geyser, and then head north and along the right side to jump up to a higher ledge. Now use the next Spirit Spring Geyser here to get even further up, and finally, go up a third one to get to the top of this area. You'll start to see the lush green landscape turn to a red. You're on the right track. Continue along the road and head to your left towards the church. You'll be invaded by a black phantom here just like at the shallow river. Simply rush through to the inside of the church and activate the Site of Grace. Now you can either die, or defeat Anastasia Tarnished Eater. It makes no difference. Anastasia is parryable, and you can kill her with bleeds fairly effectively, but she will roll a lot. The Reduvia can stun lock her if you get close enough. If you manage to beat her, you'll get a pretty unremarkable charm and some runes. Otherwise, pilfer the area around the church for the materials. You'll also likely get a conversation with Melina here and access to the round table. This is essentially your hub area and you can check that out at your leisure. Back on track. From the smoldering church, you'll want to get back onto the road. Get back on torrent and follow the road. Jump over the gate and you'll find another site of grace ahead. Activate this, quickly pillage the area, and then get back on torrent following the road northeast. You'll have to run past a lot of enemies as you work your way through Kaled. The Tyrannosaurus dogs by the stagecoach should absolutely be avoided. As you pass by the stagecoach, head to your left to activate a site of grace. Rest here to drop any enemy aggro you may have. Get back on Torrent once again and head through the Kalem Ruins. Get back onto the road and continue following it now. As you pass the telescope, there's a Site of Grace on your left that you should activate. Resume the ride south along the road. Avoid the weird silverfish men as they'll shoot projectiles at you. Simply run along the road on Torrent and you should be fine. Follow this road until you turn southwest and you'll find a Site of Grace on your right. This is obstructed by a large tree root so make sure you find it and activate it. Now get back on Torrent and back on the road, and continue along the path. You'll eventually pass Decaying Exes, a dragon. Ignore this dragon and continue along the road to the monument. Pick up the map of Kaled and take a look at it. Once you've de aggroed the dragon, head southwest back up the hill towards a church. Run around the left side and activate the Site of Grace at the Church of Dragon Communion. This will be useful very shortly, but for now, go ahead and rest to drop any enemy aggro, or die, and then fast travel north to the Kalem Ruins. There's another short trek to Fort Faroth here. You'll want to head northeast to get back onto the road. You'll once again want to follow this road on Torrent. You'll need to avoid some enemies and then jump a small gap to Greyol's Dragon Barrow. Straight ahead on your right, activate the Site of Grace. Continue along the road now on Torrent and you'll find another monument for the map of the Dragon Barrow. You can set a marker on your map for the fort. This is on the path that forks south. This is your current destination. 
Follow the path and run past any dragons on Torrent. All you need to do is avoid any and all combat. The giant dragon is our target, but you should ignore it for now. Continue riding forward to find a site of grace outside of Fort Faroth. Rest here to reset any enemy aggro that you might have. If you want, you can enter Fort Faroth and do a quick run through to grab half of a medallion for access to the Atlas Plateau. You can come back here anytime you wish, however. Inside Fort Faroth, it's just a quick sprint through to the ladder and then loot the chest for the Dectus Medallion half right. Then you can simply run back or die and respawn at the Site of Grace. Now it's time to get some real value out of your Reduvia, and the whole reason that we came here in the first place. From the Site of Grace, backtrack towards the Dragon Greyol's rear leg. Put the gold pickled fowl's foot on your item bar for starters, but don't use it yet, and start attacking Greyol. You will not be counterattacked, and your attacks will seemingly do no damage. After a good number of swings, you'll get a bleed proc on Grey Yol for about 13,000 damage. You'll be totally safe here to unload on this dragon for as long as it takes. Continue to attack and bleed Grey Yol until it's very low on health. When you're about to beat Grey Yol, after about 6 bleed procs, you'll want to pop the gold pickled fowl's foot. The Gold Pickled Fowl's Foot will buff your rune gains from enemy kills for a short time frame, and all we need is a little bit. Now finish off Grey Yol with a 7th Bleed proc. This will give you a huge number of runes. This is around 96,000 with the Gold Fowl Foot active, and you'll also get 5 Dragon Hearts. You will want to use these runes immediately to level up at the nearby Site of Grace. How you build your character is up to you. But, you will want 15 Faith and 12 Arcane for access to Dragon Breath attacks first. Personally, I leveled up very poorly here, getting the required stats for the Moonveil Katana, which I simply will not be using. This is 18 dex and 23 intelligence. You'll be better off increasing your vigor and mind for this first. Raising your dexterity is fine, but the intelligence is wasted itemization for right now. Spend your runes on whatever you see fit, but favor survivability and melee combat for now. You can adjust later easily. Make sure you get a minimum of 15 faith and 12 arcane. Now you should fast travel back to the Church of Dragon Communion. Head to the Flaming Altar. You can now trade Dragon Hearts for Dragon-based incantations. The only one that's my recommendation for right now is Rotten Breath. Fire, Ice, and Magic Breath are optional pickups. You can grab them since you're here, but absolutely get Rotten Breath. That was a main step complete, but now we're heading off to the first major grinding location. The first major grinding location is in the northernmost point of Kaled. Warp back to the Fort Faroth site of Grace now. Call Torrent and head northeast. You'll want to get back onto the road. Follow the cliff face towards the tree and then jump down when it's safe. Reorient yourself back on the path and head north for the bridge. The boss, Putrid Avatar, will likely aggro you. Simply run past it on Torrent. At the bridge, you'll encounter yet another boss dragon, Grail. Ignore it once again and continue along the bridge. There's a Site of Grace at the end of the bridge. Simply run to the end of the bridge and activate the Site of Grace on your right by the tree. Now get back on Torrent and continue north. Pick up the Golden Seed from the Budding Erd tree and continue north again. If you head straight to the Cathedral, Blackblade Kindred will spawn in and kill you in one attack. Instead, head to your left. Head up the path and you can jump into the cathedral safely without getting too close to Blackblade Kindred. Double jump Torrent up and then run to the gate. Head inside now and activate the Sight of Grace on your right. Rest here to drop the aggro of Blackblade Kindred. The beast clergyman will be non-aggressive, but you can simply ignore him. This is the easiest grinding location in this early stage of the game. Exit the beast sanctum and head to your right. This is the same way you jumped in with Torrent. You can stealth up to the little gremlin enemy here and then backstab him for some easy damage. You can then combo them down with consecutive Reduvia R1s to take them out once the bleed procs for a thousand runes a trip. Now simply get back on Torrent and run back to the Site of Grace to restart this process. This is convenient early farming. You can stay here as long as you feel the need to. You can also buy gear from the Twin Maiden Husks at the Round Table. The Heater Shield is a nice addition as it gives you 100% physical block, and you absolutely want to purchase the Finger Seal. With the Finger Seal, you will be allowed to cast Rotten Breath. The Finger Seal only takes one trip of killing the Gremlins, so make sure that you buy it at the Twin Maiden Husks. You can also level up your Vigor, Mind, and Endurance as much as you like using this method to help with the bosses moving forward. Speaking of bosses, it's time for one. 
We have to clear two bosses, Margit and Godric, before we can get access to White-Faced Vare's questline. Fast travel back to the Limgrave Gatefront Site of Grace. We're going for Margit now. Get on Torrent and follow the road west. You'll enter Stormgate. Largely ignore the items on the ground, these are bait. Simply run west along the path and avoid the archers by running and jumping on Torrent. At the top of the hill, you'll find another golden seed at the small Erd tree. Pick this up. Now continue along the path and find the Site of Grace on your right. Stop here and increase your flask charges using the seed. At the Stormhill Shack, you can talk to the woman here. Exhaust her dialogue talking to her multiple times. Now grab the Stone Sword key nearby before getting back on Torrent and follow the path northwest. Once again, you'll encounter resistance. Just run forward, avoiding the barricades and enter the gate. Sprint through the tunnel and you'll find a Site of Grace on your left. Activate this Site of Grace and rest here now. You may want to add exactly one charge to your FP flask from your HP flask. Head up towards the gate now. Summon Sorcerer Rogier on your right before heading inside. Make sure that you prime your Lone Wolf Ashes on your equipment bar before you enter. You'll get a cutscene now and encounter Margit the Fell Omen. Rogier and your wolves will provide a large distraction. This is so you can focus on attacking Margit from behind and burning him down with bleeds. It is easy to die in this fight, but try to focus on spamming R1s on Margit when Rogier takes the heat off of you. If you're smart, you'll bring one FP flask. You can summon the wolves, chug the FP flask, and then use Rotten Breath twice to make sure Margit is inflicted with Scarlet Rot. This provides a moderately strong but long-lasting damage over time effect on Margit. Then you can focus him down with your bleeds. I played absolutely horribly and had an objectively terrible build and I crushed Margit spamming R1s with the Reduvia here. This may take you a few attempts, but you should definitely be able to come out ahead. If you're struggling, you can head back to the grinding location to get some more levels. Alternatively, you can do what everyone tells you to do in Elden Ring, which is quote unquote, come back later. You're not ready for this part yet. Go explore. I think that's not the best advice. Margit should go down without much issue, it just might take you a couple of attempts. You can also opt to forego the Ghost Wolves in favor of Rotten Breath. It's likely much better damage output overall. For beating Margit the Fell Omen, you'll get a Talisman Pouch. This gives you a second accessory slot and is very welcome. Activate the nearby Site of Grace once you've beaten him and spend the souls from Margit. If you're just shy of a level or two, you can go ahead and grind a couple of the gremlins back at the Beast Sanctuary, then spend the runes on levels. After you're finished with your post Margit glow, head west up the path towards the main gate of the castle. At the gate, turn left and head inside. Now turn to your right and talk to the gatekeeper. You can opt to go through the main gate, but it can be difficult with all of its defenses. The sideway is your intended route through the game, but it's a significantly longer distance to Godric. This is your call. For this guide, personally I'll be going the sideway, mostly because I missed it during my first playthrough. Head to your left and out the hole. Follow this path to your right and jump onto the ledge. Now simply follow this path until you drop down off a wall. Run through this field to your right and activate the Sight of Grace. You can quit out if you're fast, or defeat the Eagle with swords using your Reduvia. The Reduvia Bloodblade weapon art will work pretty well against this guy in a pinch. Activate the Sight of Grace and rest at it. Now head up the ledge to the side and jump onto the staircases. You should avoid the enemies here and simply run past everything for the sake of your sanity. Enter the tower and head straight through. Roll through all barrels to break them without exploding them. This door is locked, so avoid it and run to your left. I got really unlucky here and got stuck, but I did get lucky and survive falling to the bottom. The enemies all followed me, so I had an easier time getting up to the top level. You might want to try this. Continue along the path to the upper area. Now roll through the barrels in this corridor. The next area is obstructed by many crates and barrels. Bash them and head up the staircase. Enter the door on your right and you'll get a cutscene. Head through and you'll find a rusty key on your right. You'll likely die immediately to the knight in here and it's kind of beyond our capabilities at the moment. If you're fast, you can run to the chest and open it to get the curved sword talisman. Otherwise, just die to the knight. We only cared about this key. Back at the site of Grace, head back up through the area once again, taking a right at the top and then following the staircase. This time, head straight to the door and use the rusty key to open it. Now head up the ladder inside this room. At the top, you should head to your left and exit out onto the ramparts. 
Now turn around and head up the staircase. Head inside the building, avoid the enemy, and continue up the next set of stairs on your right. At the top, head to your left and enter the room to find a Sight of Grace. Activate it and rest at it if you can. Now exit the tower to the ramparts. Head to your left and avoid the eagles with exploding barrels. You'll likely die a few times trying to get through this area. I know I did. Head up the left side onto the landing and heal if you get hit. Then jump across to the right and head down the staircase. Follow the roof to your right and jump on or climb down the ladder. The area on the left is a dead end, so unless you want to talk to Rogier, you're gonna get toasted in here. Instead, head to your right and follow the path into another tower. You can quickly snatch a golden rune as you cross this room into the large area. You should head to your right and pass through the outside into the other room. Here you can pick up the Mimic's Veil in the chest. Now head down the stairs to ground level. You can bypass the enemies in this room, simply hug the right side and sprint out to the main courtyard. Do your best to dodge the gunfire while heading up the left side. Break the barricades and jump over obstacles until you reach the large center stairs. Immediately head right and run up the stairs to pass the first enemy. At the top of the stairs, head left and jump to the other set of stairs. Grab the smithing stone at the top and then jump down to ground level and enter this room to find a site of grace. Inside this room, pull the lever to activate the elevator. Ride this to the top and then exit out onto the new area. You can avoid the pots and just head down to your right. Cross this area to find another site of grace and rest at it. This marks the site of grace before Godric, our goal. If you want some extra assistance, head to your left and down this path. Grab the golden seed from the tree and then continue onto your left to find Nephili Lu. Talk to her and pillage the area. You'll be able to summon her for the Godric fight. Exit and try and pillage the area before your inevitable death. This is time for the boss fight. If you have any seeds, upgrade your flask charges with them. Godric can be pretty annoying, but we're gonna just run it down. Make sure you have at least one blue flask for FP. This will very likely take you multiple attempts. Exit out from the Sight of Grace and summon Nephili Lu, Warrior, and approach the Fog Gate. Start the fight by summoning the Spirit Wolves. Then chug your FP flask and unload a double rotten breath on Godric by holding the button down. This should instantly plague him with Scarlet Rot and do a good amount of damage. Now it's just a matter of equipping Reduvia and trying to kill Godric with bleeds and Scarlet Rot damage before he kills you. Whenever Godric is focusing on Nephili, attack him from behind with Reduvia. Godric has some very annoying AoE attacks that will likely make you lose at least once in this fight. You'll have to focus on dodging his attacks when he focuses on you and this will likely take several attempts of learning the timings. Having a heater shield for 100% physical block will be beneficial during multiple parts of this fight. In phase 2 you'll need to watch out for his grabs, more so for when he grabs Nephili. The dragon breath will continue to hit the ground behind him and you as a result. I'll talk you through my successful attempt, this was my third attempt at Godric. Enter the fog wall as usual and summon your wolves. These provide some minor damage and minor distraction, but they will die, like instantly. Instantly chug the FP flask and start with Rotten Breath. This inflicts Scarlet Rot on Godric right off the bat. As Godric is swarmed by Nephili and the Wolves, I get cleared out with a stomp. It's pretty much the worst case scenario. I thought I was clear, but you know what? I got nailed anyway. Nice. That's pretty typical Dark Souls 3, I mean Elden Ring for you. Whenever I can, I'm just looking to spam R1s to proc bleeds. You can actually heal your way to victory in this fight, so don't be shy about healing. Thankfully, I'm fast rolling and can dodge most of Godric's other combos. We get to phase 2 pretty fast. At this point, you should run straight at Godric and you'll dodge the flames and get a chance for some free hits. The combos are annoying, but as long as you're able to survive and get out, you can heal. Using knowledge from previous losses, it's easy to dodge the flame grabs that hit Nephili.
I get the focus from Nephilim and have to dodge, but a final bleed proc takes out Godric. This is about as good as it can go. This fight is pretty fast and furious, especially if you're using Reduvia. You'll get a great rune and remembrance for beating Godric. Rest at the Sight of Grace and spend your runes. You can also kill Gatekeeper Gostok here for his ball bearing if you want. Just hand this over to the Twin Maiden Husks later. You should head back to the start of the game now. Fast travel to the first step. Now talk to white-faced Vare and he'll tell you to have an audience with the fingers at the round table. Fast travel to the round table now. Head to the newly opened door and talk to Enya and touch the two fingers. With this complete, you don't have to talk to Vare again, but he will have moved to the Rose Church. This is in Lierna of the Lakes. Head back to the Godric Site of Grace. It's time for one more leg of the journey. Back at Stormvale Castle, you should head to the staircase, ascend it, and then open the door. There are items to pillage in the keep, but your goal is just to head to the bottom now. Head to your left and find your way down along the winding staircases until you can drop down. Now you can exit out to Lierna of the Lakes, the next region. The Site of Grace is immediately on your left. Activate it, and then head left into the Church of Irith. Pick up the Sacred Tyran here. Look at your map now. You should set a marker for the map of Lierna. It's visible through the fog, just barely. Head down and follow the path while maintaining positioning following this marker. As you reach the bottom of the start of the water, you can find another site of grace at your left. Make sure to activate this and then get back onto Torrent. Follow your marker to the map and pick it up. There are enemies nearby, so quickly try and grab it. Now you'll want to head north. You'll find yourself in the Purified Ruins. This is kind of annoying to find, but you'll want to head northwest to find the Rose Church. There's a Site of Grace here if you can pick it up at Laskiar Ruins. If you're smart, you'll pick up the second Lierna of the Lakes map. This also has a close Site of Grace to the Rose Church. You should head to the map now. Once you've grabbed the map, head to the Rose Church. It's directly west of this Site of Grace. There is not a Site of Grace at this church, unfortunately. You'll want to quit out here to drop any aggro you may have. Vare will be at the entrance. Talk to Vare and tell him something seemed off about the fingers. He'll now give you five festering bloody fingers. These are invasion items. You'll have to use these to invade three players' worlds. You don't need to fight them, you can simply use the Finger Severer to exit immediately. You can attempt to fight people if you wish, that's your call. I personally find PvP in these games pretty... unenjoyable, to say the least. Otherwise, after the three invasions, you should return to Vare. He'll tell you to anoint the Lord of Blood's favor in the blood of a Maiden, but you're Maidenless. Game really likes to rub that in. You'll have to find a Maiden, you have two main options here. The first option does require a boss fight, but the second does require a lot more runaround. You'll need to do this for standard game progression anyways. You'll want to get the Glintstone Academy key and head into the Academy at some point in Elden Ring. You'll want to start by getting the Academy Glintstone key. You'll need this key to head towards the Great Lift and then loop around to a church in the northeast side of Lierna that has a maiden who's just given her blood away. Start by running from the Rose Church northwest. The marker is right here on the map. Follow this path north by northwest on Torrent until you find a large rock outcropping guarded by a dragon. Simply run past it while he's sleeping and loot the corpses for the Academy Glintstone Key. Now just run away. You'll now need to head into the Academy properly. You can allow the dragon or nearby lobsters to take you out, or head across the lake to find a site of grace on a grassy hill. This conveniently is also at the foot of the four belfries, which is actually option one and is faster. You can jump to this point now if you like. The first option is the Belfries in Lierna of the Lakes. You'll have to go back and fight the Grafted Scion from the tutorial area here. This is a boss fight, but you should have little difficulty with the rematch. All you have to do is get to the Belfries. Simply follow the path from the Site of Grace upwards. You'll want to follow this up and around all the way to the top of the mountain. Here you'll find another Site of Grace. You'll also find a special Stone Sword Key behind you. This is the Imbued Sword Key, and it's specifically for these Belfries. 
The one you want is the belfry directly below you. Simply head back down the mountain and it's the first belfry on your left. Use the imbued sword key here and take the teleporter. You'll be taken to the Chapel of Anticipation. This is back at the start of the game. You'll have to face off against Grafted Scion here. You should open this battle with Rotten Breath as you won't be able to summon your wolves. Rotten Breath will do a large amount of damage over the course of this fight. Now you can simply use your Heater Shield to block attacks and Reduvia to focus him down with bleed procs. Focus on getting behind Grafted Scion and spamming R1 to proc bleeds. Repeat this process while guarding his attacks and you should be able to eke out a win relatively painlessly with Scarlet Rot and bleed procs. You'll get some fairly uninteresting weapons and a shield for your trouble. Once the path opens up to you again, head back across the bridge and back to where you first started the game. Here you'll find a dead maiden. Dye the cloth in her blood and you'll be finished here. If you've chosen option 2, you'll need to go through a pretty lengthy runaround. You'll need to walk to the Academy Gate Town. Now orient yourself west and head forward. You'll find a large broken bridge. Run up this and then quickly make a detour to the right to the small sapling Erd tree to get a golden seed. Now continue west and you'll find a fortified entrance to the Academy. Simply run through this area, jumping over obstacles on Torrent until you find a very large magic sealed gate. Activate the Sight of Grace here. Since you picked this up earlier, use the Glintstone Academy key to pass through the seal. Now directly ahead of you, activate the next Sight of Grace. Now head to your right and pass through the seal. Do not bother activating it just yet. Head to the end of this area for another sapling Erd tree. Collect the Golden Seed. Now jump off or return to the last Sight of Grace. This time activate the seal and you'll be warped across to the next area. Hop on Torrent once again and head north. You'll need to run quite a distance here. Set your bearing from north to northeast and follow the cliffside. You'll find a grassy path upwards. Continue to follow this path and you'll have to run off a cliff to a lower path that's also still leading upwards. You'll want to make a right into a cave-like area and then continue running up this path. Dodge these madness rats as you do this. As you run up this mountain, you'll get afflicted with madness. This will tear off a large chunk of your HP and dismount you. Make sure you heal after this and jump back on Torrent immediately. Try to create a line of sight blocking the barrier between yourself and a certain reference to a certain movie. Keep moving forward and you'll enter the Frenzy Flame Village. This is a very simple pass through. Head straight through the village and turn right to head up a path. Follow this path upwards towards the church at the top of the mountain. You'll eventually be dismounted from Torrent. You'll get invaded by Festering Fingerprint Vike. Ignore him and make a beeline for the church. Activate the Sight of Grace in here. If you want, you can try and beat Vike, but you're fine if you die, as long as you activated the Sight of Grace. Once you're cleared of Vike for now, in the Church of Inhibition you should loot the Sacred Tear and the Finger Maiden set. You can also use the favor here to coat it in Maiden Blood. Make sure to upgrade your flask with the tier. Now you can return to Vare. This is where the two paths converge. Return to the Rose Church and give the favor to Vare. Your tasks are complete and he'll eventually ask for your finger. You should give it to him. You'll receive a bloody finger. This will let you invade people as much as you like. No need for consumables. You'll also receive the Pure Blood Knight's Medal. This is really what we did this quest line for. You can use the Pure Blood Knight's Medal to teleport yourself to Mogwin Palace in the Underground. This is an endgame area and is very difficult. Start by heading forward up the steps to the map of Mogwin Palace area. Now you'll want to head back down and hop on Torrent. You have a very high likelihood of being one-shotted here. Thankfully, you can just simply die and then reuse the Pure Blood Knight's Medal to teleport back here as many times as this takes. Get on Torrent and turn around. Now you'll want to follow along the left wall. Jump up onto the rock face and you can double jump to avoid the giant skeleton swings. The first part is by far the most difficult. Simply follow the left cliffs through the swamp but avoid going into any caves. Follow this path for a while until it eventually goes upwards. This will loop around to the right while ascending. Near the top you'll find the Sight of Grace on your right and this is exactly what we came here for. Touch Grace. This is by far the best grinding location in the game and there are multiple ways you can grind at this location. 
First up is by backstabbing these alien guys off the cliff. This is a quick way to get about 2,000 runes a kill. It's not great and pretty unreliable. If they don't get fully knocked off the edge, you can quickly finish them off with Reduvia R1s. You have to just kill one and head back to the site of Grace to reset and try again. This is basically twice as fast as the Gremlins in the Beast Sanctuary. Next up is using Rotten Breath. This is a decent way to collect a few kills. Simply run forward and use Rotten Breath. Then consume an FP Flask and use a second Rotten Breath. You can then head back to the site of Grace or hop on Torrent and flee the area while you wait for the enemies to die to Scarlet Rot. Then simply return to the site of Grace and restart this process. This is mildly effective and requires minimal actual combat. You can use Reduvia R1s to take out some of the lower health enemies quickly though. The final way is with a longbow. You'll need to purchase a longbow from the twin maiden husks at the round table. This bow has enough range for what we need it for. Then you can just buy regular arrows from Kale at the Church of Ellie. You can use the Rotten Breath strategy to accumulate some early runes and then use the money to buy the bow and arrows. With the longbow equipped, head back. You should run to this little rock outcropping and aim for the giant crow in the Blood Lake. You'll want to position yourself close to the edge. If you're too far back this won't work so hug the edge. You can now manually aim or target lock and both should be fine. Loose an arrow and if it connects you'll pull the crow towards yourself. This will cause the crow to run off the cliff and die for about 10,000 runes. This is the fastest and safest way with no combat involved. You're free to do whatever you see fit in this grinding location. You can use Rotten Breath or Bow Sniping or some combination of both. This is just the place that you can level up extremely quickly and safely. You could easily level up to end game levels here. We're talking like 150 plus. It will take a very long time, but you can break it up to explore and return to this area whenever you feel the need to tune up during your playtime in Elden Ring. One final thing, but are you ready to get the last sword you'll ever need? Start by warping to the foot of the four belfries. From this warp point, you want to head back east into the lake. Once you're down below, you should head northeast, following the cliffside on Torrent. You should set a marker for the map marker. This is a pretty long ride. Setting the beacon will help once the cliff clears and you can see it through the mist. After running past a few land octopi, you should grab the Site of Grace. Now head to the map and pick it up. This should finish out Lierna of the Lake's maps. You'll want to enter the King's Realm Ruins now. The path may not be obvious. You can be cheeky and jump across this gap on the left, but you can simply break down the fake wall with an attack. This leads to a Site of Grace and Iggy the Blacksmith. Activate the Site of Grace. Iggy sells somber smithing stones. You'll want to purchase a level 1, 2, and 3 stone after getting the sword, so keep that in mind. Your goal is now simply to follow the road into the castle. You will be bombarded with magic arrows, but you can simply dodge them by moving laterally to your side. Eventually, you'll make it to the castle, and you can rest at the site of grace nearby. Now enter Caria Manor and turn to your left. Run up this area and jump onto the rock outcroppings. Now follow the wall along this path until you reach a staircase. Jump onto the stairs and run inside the building on your left. Continue up the next staircases and then activate the Site of Grace at the top. Rest at this Site of Grace now. Now exit out onto the ramparts. Start by heading to your right and follow this path. Now turn left and forward until you can turn right again. Continue forward and once you see the broken wall, look down to your left. Jump onto this building and then down a second time. Use the ladder to reach the bottom. Follow this path to the door and a chest that contains the Sword of Night and Flame. This sword is by far the most balanced weapon in the game. Open the door if you want. Now you can head back to the grinding location in the underground at Mogwin Palace. You'll want to grind some runes here so you can return to Iggy to purchase the somber smithing stones and upgrade this sword to plus 3 immediately. Then it's recommended to continue grinding to meet the stat requirements on this sword. Now all that's left is to progress through the game and upgrade this sword whenever you get the next tier of somber smithing stone. God knows why From made it easier to upgrade the good gear and significantly harder to upgrade the bad gear in Elden Ring. Who knows? 
Regardless, you're very well established now, and everything after this is up to you. This quick start guide will very likely be a component of the All Achievements Guide for Elden Ring sometime in the future, but don't go holding your breath for it. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters, your monthly support helps this channel out more than you can possibly know. If you want more content on FromSoft games, you can check out the FromSoft playlist that's popping up now. Thanks for watching everyone.